Hey guys, welcome back to Lo-Fi Startup. I'm here in San Francisco with my friend Shai. How's it and going? Uh, today we're talking about his company, uh, Compass. Super excited to be here. And thanks for sticking around. This is like my first video in a while. So excited to be here, chatting to Shai and let's get into it. So Shai, what was the thinking behind building this product and what brought you to San Francisco? Yeah, so it's been a journey of like building random stuff. Um, I basically, I came to San Francisco because I wanted to like build a big startup, but I didn't really have the idea. I didn't really have the visa. Right. I was like, I want, I want to build something here. And so the first product I built was actually pretty different, but it was called Everything Bagel. And the idea was like, what if you take all of your data, you know, your Instagram, your Twitter, right. your Google, like all of your data and you put it in one place and then you use AI to pull out insights and kind of like personalize gotcha. an experience. Um, and that was cool, that, that worked, but it turned out not to be very sticky. Right. So it's, it was one of those things that sounds like a good idea, but like you have to test it to find out if it's actually gonna work. And it turns out the data wasn't like dynamic enough. Gotcha. So you would have all these insights, but then like once you know them, it, the, the app stops being useful. So we were literally mid pivot trying to figure out what's next. We got accepted into Techstars. Nice. And we were like, we've got to pick an idea. Right. And then around the same time, our roommate, uh, Martinez, launched this, which is like a, an AI necklace. And it transcribes your whole life, all your conversations. And that was a big unlock for us because we, we were building something around, you know, making useful things with data. But this is like the ultimate context. It's very dynamic, it's very up to date. So we're like, what if you take all of your life's conversations, Got you. there has to be like insight there. So we, we worked on the product, we built it together, launched nice. it. Um, and it's like his first like launch tweet blew up, um, which is why he came to us. He's like, I need um, a, a team I need, to work with. Yeah, 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 we need to launch. And yeah, now we're in market, selling units and, and figuring out the product. Amazing, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks man. That's awesome, yeah. Tell us about the product. You've got a piece of hardware mm -hmm. and you've got an app which kind of talk to each other. And what have been some of the challenges? What have been some of the like kind of things you've had to think about building this product from like a technical perspective? Yeah, maybe you can share with us just a couple of those things. Yeah, for sure. So the, the essence of the hardware is pretty simple. It's just a microphone that connects to a phone via Bluetooth. So it just right. transmits audio 24 seven to the, the phone that it's paired with. And the kind of like interesting stuff is really like what you do with that audio. So right now what we do is we transcribe it first. We get kind of like this wall of trans raw transcripts, which right. isn't really interesting you know, in itself. Um, and then we use AI to structure and, and kind of like pull out insights or gotcha. reminders or, or whatever you might, you might want to do. So like um, that, that's been like the most technically interesting thing is how do you take you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of audio data right you know, hundreds of hours of, of transcriptions and, and do useful things with right. that data. Um, so thinking a lot about uh, RAG and like retrieving stuff, gotcha. like what, what is interesting to pull in to context, gotcha. what is not interesting. Um, and, and then on the hardware side, the, the first big technical challenge was like, how do you keep it connected in the background? Got you. 24 seven. Constantly streaming to the device. Basically. Yeah. Got you. Apple's pretty strict about like oh, wow. killing stuff in the background. So we, when we launched the first version, it would disconnect every 20 minutes. Apple oh, would just kill the app. That was like the first technical challenge, but got around that. Now it's it's working well. And yeah. Nice, awesome. What's been some of the kind of learnings, the key learnings with the consumer app? Because that's also a big component, right? Because you've got yeah. all this data that you're storing and you've got models running on top of that data to, as you say, kind of present key insights to customers and stuff like that. Has that kind of been like a very iterative, slow process, just like understanding what customers want and kind of shipping cool little app features um, according to kind of what they want? Or is it kind of being like present a couple ideas or use cases and kind of see which ones are sticking and kind of what works and what you think like the main use case is gonna be kind of going forward with the product? Yeah, for sure. I think it's, it's a new type of product. So we don't have like crazy references where we can like really take some of their learnings, copy it. Got you. Um, that's been like pretty difficult. And then, the, but the other piece is like, there, there are table stakes with this product and they are yep. just basic expectations. You, uh, you know, if you're using this product, you, you expect 
to be able to find the transcript where you said a certain thing. So things like search and things yep. like chat just are like expected. So you want to be able to ask, you know, what did I tell Jed yesterday when we spoke? Uh, and those features we just need to build. Right. And then the other piece is like you should be able to very quickly get an overview of your day or your week. Right. So summaries were important. Those were just like basic foundational features that we needed to build. And then where it gets interesting is figuring out um, what individual users want to do with their transcripts. So we were lucky to have uh, a pretty active early community. So we have a awesome. WhatsApp group and they are actually developers. A lot of the early adopters were, right. were developers. And so we actually let them download and export their transcripts and run prompts themselves and, and experiments oh, wow. and stuff awesome. and feedback on like what's, what's been useful. So from that, we launched this feature called Workflows. Nice. And the insight with that feature was there's so much diversity in what people want to do. Um, and so we can actually build, give people the ability to build their own workflows on top of their transcripts. Amazing. So what that looks like is right now we just generate you a summary and, and reminders. But now you have the ability to say, you know what, I actually want someone to you know, go through all my transcripts, by someone I mean AI, to go through all my transcripts <laughs> right. and tell me you know, every time I'm being negative, reframe it as positive. Got you. Or every time I lie, like fact check me. Just say, hey, you said a couple of things today. Right. I don't know if that's totally true. Uh, or you cursed today and you're trying not to swear and stuff. Right. So like, there's so much flexibility. It's such a versatile product. People are going to use it for different things. So that's like how we're seeding new ideas, it's just launching gotcha. workflows, seeing what people use, and then we'll build the like most popular workflows we'll like invest deeply in as like features. Got you. Very cool. Yeah. And what has been like the main sort of way you guys have been acquiring customers? Has it been some organic, some paid? Like I'm interested to understand, like, because it's so early, you obviously you want users, you want feedback. How has it been kind of navigating that and what have the, some of the challenges been and like some of the successes as well for that? Yeah, so we started with fully organic okay. and that was like really cool because obviously it's free and you know, you get like, you just find your people and stuff. Right. We had one viral tweet, it got 500,000 impressions. We sold like hundreds of units just from nice. that. Um, and that was cool, but it was also a bit scary because it's not repeatable. How do you go viral once a day, once a week? It's like pretty hot. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless you're Jed and you're on <laughs> a sick YouTube channel. Uh, we we wanted to validate that we could find like a repeatable sales process. Got you. So we, and a, and a repeatable way to acquire customers. So we actually experimented with a bunch of channels. Um, some of them are working better than others right now, but yeah, we're, we're deep in kind of like all the popular channels right now. Paid, nice. um, awesome. influencers. That yeah. Kind of stuff. yeah. And it's nice to see that stuff sort of blend together and kind of create this really like unified strategy actually for the long term. It's like you got a bit of paid, you got a bit of organic, yeah. you build in brand, but you also got like direct bottom of the funnel, like hard like sales kind of approaches and things like that. I know you've been experimenting with like different landing pages and like yeah. different kind of copy and like designs and stuff. It's really cool to kind of just like spread kind of wide in the beginning, see what works and kind of hone in on exactly what you think will be the most yeah. sustainable kind of growth lever to kind of so more units, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. And um, final thoughts, like there's a lot of myths around like moving to San Francisco and like it's super expensive and it's super tough. Um, what is your like advice to people out there kind of like thinking about, you know, one day wanting to move here and like how expensive is it actually? I know like yeah. you kind of get by, like how do you, yeah. how do you live? Like, cause you know, you go online and you like Google, how much does it cost to live in San Francisco? And it's like, oh, you know, you've got to earn like 120K a year or something. Yeah. Um, you've totally like disproved that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any, yeah, any advice or like kind of just feedback on what it's like, what it's been like and kind of, yeah, your thoughts on that. For sure. Yeah, I mean, people will have very different experiences, but like my my take is like, it's. it's definitely way cheaper than than what is advertised like you said like i pay myself less than minimum wage like and you, it's fine yeah. you can hustle you can get an apartment on craigslist like i'm paying like similar rent here to what i was paying in cape town because i just hustled and yeah. i have roommates and stuff like you can figure it out but the advice i'll give is like um don't over plan and don't overthink because the visa is kind of deep and complicated and it's a bit of effort and it's kind of expensive um Finding a job when you're in when you're far from the place feels a bit hard. Yeah. So uh, my advice is like don't overthink and just find a way to come here for a bit. Right. I mean you know this like popping yeah. in 
just has value in itself. Totally. Spending a few months, a few weeks here is like, can give you a lot of energy and inspiration. Yeah. But then also it's like, like come here and meet people and then you'll have lots of opportunities to get jobs or investors or whatever. And then it makes the, the next like big step easier. So I came here on a tourist visa. Luckily I had saved a bit of money for like a few months of, of not having to like, like rarely try, you know, get a job. Um, and, and that's probably what I'd recommend. And then go invest in visas. Go, right. But, but first, like don't use that as an excuse to not come here. Totally. Like you can get a tourist visa. It takes a few days and then just like come here for a few weeks or a few months and, totally. and just get stuck in and yeah. Yeah. Meet people, get yeah. excited. Good things happen when yeah. you come. Like totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for hanging out today. It's good to be here. Yes. Dude, I'm sure I'll you. be back and good luck with compass. Appreciate I'm excited it. to watch it grow and thanks for watching guys really appreciate it I will be making more videos so don't worry um, but yeah special one today and yeah see you guys soon see ya. Cheers.